the brother has asked me a question. Uh, does the prophet has unseen knowledge? Um, okay, I was with Lahmina Shaitan and then some Laraman and her bishop is the river till the Amarim Halaritan Zani Yaku Kale. When when someone says that the prophet has an unseen knowledge, we do have to know before we label someone a copier or before labeling someone uh, he is doing with uh, or he is doing shirk. But we have to understand his intention when someone says the Prophet has an unseen knowledge. And uh, if someone would ask me, uh, does the Prophet has uh, unseen knowledge? And uh, that basically does not have a one answer actually. It does have a two answers. So I cannot just answer that yes and I can answer that no. But we, first we have to understand and uh, what we are talking about and what exactly my intention before the question and what is my intention uh, before answering. Let us first understand the, the definition of an unseen knowledge uh, for a human being. The, if you ask me, a, if somebody is asking me a quick question, does, does the Prophet ﷺ has an unseen knowledge? I do have to un understand his intention. If his intention is to ask me a question that if the Prophet ﷺ has an unseen knowledge, I have to answer him uh, yes and no, and I have to make him understand what exactly the unseen knowledge means. No human being on the earth has any unseen knowledge. Even the messengers of Allah, from Adam Islam up to the Prophet ﷺ, no one has an unseen knowledge. For an example, for an example, many Sahaba used to come to the Prophet ﷺ, used to ask him, when is the last hour? And uh, the Prophet ﷺ asked the, the person who is asking and the person who is going to answer you does not know anything about that. So basically he's saying, what are you asking me? And you're asking me a question. And basically we are onto, we are onto the same uh, platform that you and me we don't know anything about it unless the Prophet ﷺ received the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay this is an exact day uh, there will be a kiyama and uh, and another example uh, if someone thinks that the Prophet ﷺ has an independence of unseen knowledge and he was basically hiding or anything it, so they have to change their uh, thoughts about the Prophet ﷺ because the Prophet ﷺ was nothing but a uh, Bashar like any, any other human being like from Adam Islam up to the Prophet ﷺ, all the messengers was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, who can guide to the Ummah so uh, if you look into the Quran the Quran in uh, in uh, Surah Kahf uh, I believe it's a verse number 110 where, the, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, asking his Prophet Sallallahu to tell them uh, the verse says that قُلْ إِنَّمَا عَنَا بَشْرَمْ مِسُلُّكُمْ يُوحَا إِلَيَّا أَنَّمَا إِلَهَكُمْ إِلَهُمْ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِكَا رَبَّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِهُمْ وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِبَعْتِ رَبَّهِ أَحَدَا Tell them I am a Bashar like you, I'm a human being like you and what do, whatever I convey my message to you it is the revelation that I received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So basically, I myself, I am nothing, I do not anything. Even uh, I'm going to just quote you from the from the, from the the Bible also, which is Christian believed to be the word of God. If you read in Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse number 30, where Jesus peace be upon him said in so-called uh, Bible and uh, it says in the red letter, which is according to the Christians, that is the sayings of the Jesus peace be upon him. So even in the Bible uh, of the Christianity uh, scripture, it does says that, um, I can my own self do nothing as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is judged, for I seek not my own will, but the will of my God. 
and uh, so the same thing the Prophet ﷺ said and same thing all the messengers said that. So those who believe that the Prophet ﷺ has an unseen knowledge and uh, but we have to know their intention what they're exactly trying to ask. Is they asking that like, if the Prophet ﷺ has an independent knowledge and he was hiding from the uh, from his ummah. So basically you are lying against the Prophet ﷺ because uh, we have alhamdulillah enough material that uh, uh, our Prophet ﷺ has conveyed every message how to live a life, how to go to the bathroom, how to do a toothbrush, and how to do a bada, how to sleep, how to lay down, how to do an intimate with your wife, and how to behave with the children, with the neighbors. Alhamdulillah, we have a completely uh, guidance for how to live a life from morning till we sleep. Even at the sleeping time, we know everything, how to use the toilet, how to use the water, everything we are being told about. So the Prophet Sallallahu so those who think the Prophet Sallallahu is being hiding anything and he probably have something, a hidden knowledge or anything like that, is nothing like that. Because the Prophet Sallallahu was, was just a human being like us and he was chosen by the uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah chose him at the age of 40 in the Gari here and sent the first message by the Gabriel alayhi salam because Allah chose him for that to guide the uh, humankind and he left us with a beautiful uh, lifestyle and we have thousands of thousands of uh, hadiths where uh, we have a complete guidance so those who say that the Prophet ﷺ has an unseen knowledge, we have to know what their intention. But if somebody has an intention, the Prophet ﷺ has the independent knowledge. Independent means without anybody's help. So that is like a shirk and we are trying to make him, uh, we are making a shirk because we are thinking that he knows. And the only one who knows that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah has only the knowledge for tomorrow and for the past and what happened in the past and only Allah knows um, what's going to happen when is the last hour when the day of Qiyamah coming when the Israfil is going to blow the trumpet we, nobody has the knowledge because the, the Prophet ﷺ has clearly mentioned in the Quran in the chapter uh, Surah Al-Kahaf chapter 18 verse number 110 where the Allah says to uh, as the Prophet ﷺ to tell them who are thinking you as you have something special power thing, but just tell them you are just like a Bashar like anybody else but it is basically that Allah has chosen him just to convey a message of Allah uh, to the Ummah and another knowledge if the Prophet ﷺ has a knowledge then examples there's a lot of examples in the Ahadith in one of the Ahadith what the Prophet ﷺ said uh, there was a Hadith when the Gibril ﷺ was uh, supposed to visit the uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, and the time passed, and uh, then then uh, later on, Gibrail came, and the Prophet ﷺ asked him, like, why the commentary of the Hadith is, uh, why did you come? And the Gibrail ﷺ said, uh, you have a dog under your uh, the place of sleeping. So now let us understand that if if the Prophet ﷺ has an unseen knowledge. Why would he didn't know that there's a puppy or the little dog was the place uh, where he sleep? And another example, uh, when he was fed by poison him in the meat, why he wasn't aware of that there was a poison in the food? Now, uh, the third example, which is um, completely has a completely entire story about uh, when the commandment of the Tayyama was being revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu and there is no water how you do the Tayyama. So basically it was revealed during the, the period uh, when I when they were traveling and Aisha radiallahu anha was sitting on the camel and when the camel sit down and her necklace was being uh, fell down and it was underneath of camel but everyone was looking out and uh, and everyone was looking and the necklace was being uh, was misplaced and it was hidden uh, underneath of the camel so let us understand everyone was looking for a necklace even the Prophet was looking for a necklace and they couldn't find it at the same time they 
there was another uh, few incidents happened at the same time when the uh, when one of the person has uh, started the scandal against the uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, but anyway, uh, so this is the, another example when the when the necklace was being lost of the Aisha radiallahu anha, why he didn't know where the necklace is? Okay, now let's say another example. When the scandal started against the Aisha radiallahu anha, why didn't the Prophet sallallahu wasn't aware of that? So basically, he was stressed and he was making dua to Allah, and also Aisha radiallahu anha was making dua to Allah. So if the Prophet sallallahu has the knowledge and he knows everything, and uh, he has an independence, and he has a special political power, and uh, he knows what's going to happen, and he knows everything. So basically, we are trying to. Uh, make the Prophet Sallallahu stand, stand next to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That, that's like the like, biggest shirk we can think of. That if someone says that uh, this particular person, like an Ali of Allah and the Wali of Allah, has a particular power and he has a specific power that he can give us a fine thing, so we are talking about the shirk because the only shafi is Allah. Only doer is Allah. Who has the knowledge? Only Allah. Who is the sustainer? Only Allah. Who is a problem solver? Only Allah. No one can do nothing except Allah. There's a beautiful um, ayah in the Quran in Surah Yunus, and uh, it's a uh, verse number 110, uh, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, So the commentary of the ayah is like, it is Allah who has the power either to benefit you or either to harm you if allah decided to benefit you and the entire creation get together nobody can harm you but if allah decided to punish you then entire creation get together nobody can give you benefit unless there's a commandment of allah and allah is the only one who forgives and allah is the only one who can solve your problems no one else and uh, there's a uh, many many examples in the in the hadith about the the prophet doesn't know anything many about many things uh, about it so, so basically it's like a, uh, some people who has a misconception that the prophet sallallahu has the unseen knowledge yes but if somebody has an intention of saying that the prophet sallallahu has an unseen knowledge because we can also call unseen knowledge to our revelation because unseen knowledge it's not something allah sends to to a uh, public or anyone but Allah sends that special message to the messenger and then the messenger has to distribute that message to uh, to people to guide them so that particular message also are, is called unseen because this is like hidden from the public and this is being seen by only by the prophet from allah through the gabriel salam. and it is not something allah uh, is talking directly to the messenger salam. even allah chose a messenger gabriel salam, to uh, to mail my message to the messengers to give the message to to the public so in that way if somebody has an intention of saying that they, uh, the prophet sallallahu has unseen knowledge because he used to receive a revelation from allah so that is okay to say that but if someone says that the prophet sallallahu has a knowledge that he has a particular power and he was trying to hide from the public that he was aware that he doesn't want to tell he has the power so the quran does give the message about that in in uh, in Asura al-kahf verse number 110 where Tell them you are only a Bashar and you're supposed to only uh, worship one Allah and do your Amal, do your Naik Amal uh, and do not uh, do a shirk and do not make someone uh, too near to Allah like uh, uh, Wahid means say that Allah is only one there's nothing like him and uh, we should keep away from listen the creation and the creator are two different things we cannot put this uh, together Allah is the creator the power he has he created everything so the created the things that are created even if it's a human being or it's an insect it's animals or whatever it is none has a zero power even the prophet sallallahu has a zero power he cannot do anything at all except there is a will of Allah alone wants him to do something 
even it's any messenger from Adam al Islam up to the Prophet sallam, no one has no power at all because they used to just sit down and wait for the message to come from the Gibrail al Islam then they are able to uh, to guide the Ummah but uh, but if someone says that no there's a particular uh, what he has this power so th think about this people are believing on all the others and people are believing on what is they are nothing com compared to the Prophet sallam, they are nothing and even the so if they are nothing how can we accept the help from them? So even the Prophet ﷺ said, I am nothing but a basher like you. I have no power and uh, I cannot do anything. Because if you read uh, into uh, Surah, uh, Surah Zumar, verse number uh, 30, where Allah said, uh, where the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, when Allah asked the Prophet ﷺ to tell them, I am going to die and also you are going to die. So if the Prophet ﷺ knows, has the unseen knowledge, did I, why, why he didn't know when he will die? Why he didn't know all this example? Why he wasn't aware of the dog? Why he wasn't aware of the necklace? Why he uh, wasn't aware of the Gabriel is going to come and meet him? And there's a several, several examples. Why he wasn't aware of that the food was poison? So we have, a, we have so many examples to tell that let's keep the creator separate and let's keep the creation separate because the power creator has the creation is nothing even the messenger even the gabriel al islam no one has no power except the one allah he is the one who is the doer even the gabriel al islam has to wait for the message from the allah uh, to, to mail to the messenger and the messenger used to wait from the Gabriel alayhi salam to when he will come to with the new message so he will be able to guide the sahabas and the sahaba is going to guide the other people.